Yo guys, welcome to another biology podcast. You might notice I'm not saying word up this time, because I've been told it's no longer cool. So I'm down with the kids, I'm trying something else. Let me know what you think to yo. I'm still a little bit unsure. Anyway, without further ado, welcome to another biology podcast. Let's get on with some learning. Today's podcast is going to be focusing on protein synthesis. That's how proteins are actually made from DNA. Before we look into that, let's have a quick sort of look at where we're at in terms of the bigger picture, what we're actually trying to learn at the moment. So if you like our more long-term learning goal, the learning that we're actually trying to do by completing the whole unit, is to learn about how DNA actually controls our traits. So how does just the difference in those base, the order of those bases actually determine how we actually are. How does it? How does DNA determine what colour eyes we have? How does DNA decide if we're going to have uh, a disease or not? And so far we've learned that we've got DNA in all our cells and that DNA replication that happens as part of mitosis ensures that every cell pretty much has a full copy of our genetic material. And we've also said that DNA is almost like a recipe for proteins. Um, but instead of having like recipes in words and sentences, there's information kept in DNA in the, in the, in the sort of nature that it's got a, a, a code that it keeps, which is the order of the bases, the orders A, T, C and G. And just those different orders of A, T, C and G determines the different types of proteins or the ingredients for the proteins that the cell is actually going to make. Now we've talked about the fact that, say for example, some people have brown eyes, some people have blue eyes, and the difference between those two people is just the fact that they've got a different protein in their eyes. So we know the fact that protein is really important. And today what we're actually going to look at is how DNA is actually involved in making proteins. And then basically linking into that is how can that be make, make DNA responsible for the traits that we have. So we're going to be learning about protein synthesis, how proteins are actually made by the cells. And to break this down a little bit, we need to think of protein synthesis happening in stages. And regardless of what cell is actually involved, there's always at least two stages involved in protein synthesis. And those two main stages are called transcription and translation. There is also a third process, which is called RNA processing, which we'll look at in a little bit more detail later on. The thing that determines whether there's three processes involved or two, or whether RNA processing takes place, is the type of cell that's actually involved. If it's a eukaryote cell, which has a nuclear membrane, that's a membrane around the nucleus, there's three processes involved. That's transcription, RNA processing, and translation. However, if we're talking about a prokaryote cell, that's like a single-celled organism that doesn't have an actual membrane around its nuclear area, then there's only two processes, translation, sorry, transcription and translation. So we're going to start off by looking at transcription, and we'll start off with a bit of a definition of that. So basically, transcription is when DNA, or a section of DNA, is actually copied and transcribed into a different molecule called RNA. So quickly I want to talk about what RNA is and then we'll actually have a look at what this idea of transcribing DNA into RNA actually is all about. So on your screen right now you should see a diagram of ribonucleic acid which is what RNA stands for. You should notice straight away it looks quite similar to DNA but there are some really important differences. The first one is that RNA is a single stranded molecule as opposed to DNA which is double stranded. It also is made up, the similarity here is it's made up of nucleotides which consist of a sugar, a phosphate and a base. However with RNA we've got a different type of sugar. So we've actually got a ribose sugar instead of a deoxyribose sugar. Another key difference are the bases that ribonucleic acid or RNA is actually made of. So just like DNA it's made up of adenine, guanine, cytosine but the difference is ribonucleic acid or RNA doesn't have thiamine and instead of thiamine it has uracil. So the three main differences, first of all RNA is single stranded, secondly it has a ribose sugar instead of a deoxyribose sugar and thirdly instead of having thiamine as one of its bases it has a base called uracil. So I'm hoping that gives you an idea of what RNA is which will help you to understand what this, what this um, process of transcription actually involves. Now very simply, if I was to give you sort of a quick definition off the top of my head, obviously aware that you don't know too much about this, I'd just say that the DNA is unzipped and the enzyme runs along a section of DNA and basically matches up the right bases and makes like a piece of RNA that complements a piece of DNA. So basically transcription, at the end of transcription you have a piece of RNA 
which basically has a base order, adenine, guanine, cytosine and uracil, that's complementary to a particular piece of DNA. So if you like, the first part of protein synthesis involves a section of DNA or a gene being copied into a piece of RNA that sort of matches the base order. So again, if it, say, ran past a C, it would complement that with a G. If it ran past a T, it would complement that with an A. The difference being that if it ran past an A, instead of, of putting a T with it, it would put a U with it, because U would be the, the base that RNA has that matches with A, because it doesn't have a thiamine, so it has uracil instead. I hope that's clear. If not, stick with me and we'll hopefully clear this up as we go on. So let's give you another bit of a visual here to try and understand what's actually going on. So if you look at your screen right now, you'll see we've got a bit of a video going on there, a bit of an animation, and you'll see that big green thing moving from the sort of top left of the screen, moving in towards the DNA. Now that big green thing is actually RNA polymerase. It's an enzyme, and as you've probably guessed, RNA polymerase, it actually makes RNA. Okay? Now the first thing it does, as you can see there, is actually unzipping the DNA. So we can see that basically RNA binds to the DNA and it starts to unzip it, which basically means it's unwinding the DNA and basically pulling the two strands apart from one another. And when it's done that, the RNA polymerase basically runs along the piece of DNA and, and reads it. So it actually reads what bases are actually there and then using nucleotides that are actually floating around the nucleus or floating around the cell, it then basically attaches them to it and creates a complementary piece of RNA. So that's a single stranded molecule that matches the DNA that's actually been unzipped. And you can see that happening there in the video as the RNA polymerase runs along the piece of DNA. It's just basically matching up those nucleotides and attaching them on and ultimately what it's doing is it's making a molecule of RNA and that's what we call an RNA transcript. Now when it's moved all the way along the gene or the particular part of DNA that's being transcribed as you can see there that transcript then lifts off the piece of DNA and then starts floating away from the DNA and that's basically the process of transcription which is involved in actually making a complementary piece of RNA, a piece of RNA that actually matches the DNA. Now we actually give that RNA, that particular RNA you've just seen being made there, a special name. It's actually called mRNA and the M stands for messenger. And that's because what it's actually used for is the DNA serves as almost like the recipe book if you like. And the RNA, the messenger RNA is actually created, it's actually matched up to the, the recipe book and then it's almost like a letter. It's actually been sent away from the DNA and it's sent to the part of the cell that's actually involved in actually then making the protein. So it's almost like a message. So we had our DNA, the DNA was unzipped by RNA polymerase. The RNA polymerase then made an, RNA, an mRNA transcript, a piece of mRNA, which is then being basically sent away from the DNA towards the part of the cell that's actually going to be making the protein. So in the form of a message, the RNA then basically is sort of carrying that recipe for that specific part of the DNA, that specific section, that specific gene. So that's the first of the three stages of um, protein synthesis transcription i'm going to end this podcast there um, i'm going to put another one up there that's going to cover the other two so keep it real and i will speak to